now I'm uh, in Mykonos. Wow, even better, even better. Okay, uh, I'm welcoming Elina Nechayeva, the Estonian uh, with the amazing voice that uh, made the Estonians so proud in 2018 in Lisbon. How are you, Elina? Thank you, thank you. I'm so happy to speak with you. And I feel amazing because I'm on this uh, fabulous Greek island, Mykonos. I'm enjoying the sun and the sea and the uh, extraordinary Mykonian vibe. <laughs> God, uh, uh, following your Instagram, it's not your first time in Greece, right? No, actually it is my first time in Greece. Okay, and uh, how, do you, yeah. how, do you, how do you see the country, the islands? Sorry, how did I? What's your impressions from the Greek islands? Ah, from my impression from Greek islands, it's just it's something really special. Uh, the people are so friendly, of course, the weather, the sun and the sea, this blue sea is so clear. Um, it's something incredible. And the service, uh, people, yeah, they're so friendly. I love it here. But the traffic, it's something else. <laughs> Yes, small roads, I can imagine. Um, yeah. what, uh, what is the one thing that you that made you um, not say fall in love with, with Mykonos or the Greek islands that impressed you most? You know, it has been uh, a very long dream to come to visit Greece because uh, of its food, uh, the history, the culture, yeah, I have dreamt for many, many years, and finally I made it here. My dream come, came true, and yeah, I really love it because, as I told, uh, the welcome is so nice, and the food is uh, it's amazing, and the culture, I love it. I love it. Uh, from uh, from the things that you ate, what did you like the most? Of course, Greek salad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I see that you are um, in Ornos, I think. In which area of the of Mykonos? Uh, I'm not far away from uh, Mykonos. From, ah, okay. City. Um, it's, yeah. But I have discovered some beautiful uh, uh, beaches and uh, very authentic uh, Greek restaurants, uh, also in the north of the island. And uh, yeah, it's something incredible. You never see such thing, for example, in Estonia. Uh, you, you also visited Crete, right? No, no. Actually, I stayed only on uh, Mykonos Island. Yeah, uh, because uh, my vacation is quite limited, only one week. So I decided to to stay on Mykonos and explore this uh, beautiful island. Oh, nice. And uh, when you go home, uh, what are your plans? Uh, actually, I'm leaving tonight. And uh, my next plans are interviews uh, and um, concerts because I really the city in December with the beautiful uh, classical music uh, and the city it's called the sound of uh, mu of the beauty of the sound so I chose my favorite pieces when I listen to other singers sing them I always get goosebumps mm -hmm. and also when I sing them I also get goosebumps so I chose the most beautiful music for me which is quite um, actually technically difficult too for uh, coloratura soprano. So uh, this uh, CD is filled with the most beautiful music for high voice. And uh, now finally, when there is no restrictions, no Corona yeah, restrictions, I can finally present this beautiful program for the Estonian audience. And I, I'm having a little tour in Estonia. Is, you've been as a performer in Eurovision, in the national yes. section, uh, but you were also as a host. What, which role would you prefer? Uh, I love both roles because uh, they're very different. When you're performing, of course, uh, the pressure is uh, 
um, there is much more pressure. And uh, at the same time, you have your three minutes when you have to do your best and to shine and uh, to put all your soul and, uh, and uh, heart into the music. Uh, but when you're hosting, it's more about supporting other artists. But at the same time, you're carrying the weight of the whole show uh, on, on your shoulders, like for the whole life. So there is actually, for me, there was even more pressure when I was hosting. But I really, I love the both uh, roles. But of course, I love singing, you know. <laughs> it's always a bigger pleasure to sing, but I really enjoy hosting too. Um, regarding the Eurovision 2018, we, we were seeing you interacting with the fans and the press, and you were very confident. Did you ever stress? No, I was really enjoying the whole process. You know, this um, two weeks we stayed in Lisbon, it was like a roller coaster ride because there were so many interviews, uh, performances, uh, and uh, it was like a marathon, a, a little of sleep and a lot of doing, doing, doing every day. And yeah, I was enjoying the every second of it because the people that I met there, all the journalists, the contestants, the organizers, they were fantastic. Uh, Eurovision fan group, I think, it's incredible. I've never seen anything like that because they're all so supporting, so loving. And um, I hope that uh, Eurovision fan group will grow and grow into the future bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, you know that we all still love you very much and appreciate your, uh, your, your entry. Is there any, any story from Lisbon backstage that we never heard of? Hmm. Let me think. Um, I think that there were a lot of uh, wonderful stories, uh, uh, meeting with other artists and uh, sharing uh, thoughts, energy, love for music. It was special. Hmm. With whom did you become more closer as a friend? Um, I really found wonderful friends uh, at the Eurovision 2018. Uh, for example, we did later concerts with um, Alexander Rybak together. Yes, and we were also thinking about uh, recording a song together, but then yeah, the corona came and it became so difficult. And also we did concert together with um, Austrian competitor, uh, Caesar Sampson and uh, yeah maybe because we got along so well because uh, <laughs> Caesar Sampson was uh, singing before me in the final and Alexander Rebak was singing after me <laughs> so we were chilling out together all the time um, between uh, rehearsals and everything you know uh, backstage uh, when you have to go to the stage uh, you have to stand in your order so of course you get to know these people uh, better who are surrounded, like who are in the order next to you. <laughs> and a year after it came, the, the Netflix movie came. How, how yeah. this participation, how the invitation was made? Actually, uh, there was an email and they, said, they asked uh, if I'm available and if I'm wishing to join and to participate in a movie a big hollywood movie and at first i thought it was a joke <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and uh, then i googled uh, all the details like what is who what is this company doing and actually who who are these people and uh, then i discovered that they're doing a real thing <laughs> and of course then I wrote the director of the movie and uh, introduced the plot and of course I was super excited to go there and to sing with uh, such incredible artists and uh, actors. It was an amazing experience that I think I will never forget. <laughs> we, we will also never forget. And um, 
what about a new song? You have you haven't released something a while for a while. Yeah, I think the last uh, release was uh, for uh, the last Esti Laul. Oh no, actually, I released uh, this year. I released uh, a song called Planet B. Okay. And uh, uh, actually, it was supposed to go for Esti Laul, but uh, the other song was chosen, which was Remedy. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought that I will still release the Plan B song because um, I wrote it, uh, lyrics and the music, I wrote it myself. And um, it's about the unity and unity with all the people and uh, all uh, uh, that we, uh, we don't have Planet B, we only have planets that we're living on. And uh, we are one under the star called Sun. <laughs> And actually, uh, listening to this song and watching this song on YouTube, uh, actually every person contributes to the uh, to the um, uh, to our planet because uh, half of the royalties I share to the um, uh, to the company that makes uh, World Cleaning Day. This is an Estonian organization that takes care of our planet, and they. Uh, support, uh, for example, the African schools, uh, they're building schools in Africa and uh, dealing with uh, water problems and uh, taking care of uh, our planet. So yeah, um, doing collaboration with them with this song. If you, had, um, if you have the chance to sing La Forza again in Eurovision, but you can do it with any artist that you want, whom would you choose? Oh my God, that's a wonderful question. I would sing La Forza anytime, especially to your vision. But if I would choose a partner, oh, I think one of uh, your vision contestants that is really famous and that I really admire is Celine Dion. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think that would be something, yeah, something really interesting as a duet. Elena, I don't want to, to waste any of your time, but I want to ask you one last thing. Are you coming back to Eurovision soon? Uh, I would, every day, I would, you know, any moment. But uh, we'll see uh, if I will have something interesting, uh, some interesting song or project. Of course, I will send any time it to AC Laul. And there, of course, we'll see how well it can do there. Because uh, this year, for example, we had uh, Stefan. And I really loved his song. And I, from the beginning, I thought that he's going to go to Eurovision because he had been so many times at AC Laul. And uh, yeah, I think he did really good. But let's see, because I ha I'm having some plans about yeah. recording new songs, writing new music. And uh, I would love to wish to the Greece a lot of happiness, a uh, lot of sunshine and beautiful music uh, in everyday lives. And I hope that in the future, Greece uh, will, uh, will make us all happy with beautiful entries to your vision and uh, with beautiful uh, islands. So all the people from Europe and from the whole globe can fall in love with Greece. Are we, are we gonna see you again in Greece next summer? I hope so, I hope, because I really loved it here, so. Maybe we can see each other and do a wonderful interview face to face. <laughs> yes, perfect. Just keep in touch.